Well, it's all changed for me. Hello and welcome to this little old channel of mine. Now, as you probably know, if you've followed me and this channel for a long time, you'll know I've been a loyal and devoted Olympus user for over 10 years now. Love the cameras, love the lenses, love the format. I've been very much championing this system even when the masses have chosen EPS-C or full frame. And I'm in no way linked or sponsored by Olympus never have been. The system just worked for me and it has shaped my photography and what I've shot for the last 10 years. But now it feels like the system has reached a peak, as it were. My favourite cameras to use have long been the retro looking Pen Fs. These are compact, stylish bodies and work perfect alongside the equally small Olympus Prime lenses. I've taken what I feel are some of my best images with these cameras and they've been a joy to use they really have but but these cameras are starting to date a bit now and i've been looking forward to or wishing for a pen f mark ii from olympus or omd systems as they are now but despite waiting this hasn't happened and quite frankly i can't see it happening anytime soon either so starting to feel slightly disheartened with the system, with great timing, a new camera was released by another manufacturer, a camera in a system that I've always seen as my backup. If I were to make a switch, this would be it. I never made the switch though, as they never seemed to make my ideal camera to drag me from the Pen Fs, until now. So after 10 years, is it time for a move, a switch? Even if a switch isn't entirely necessary, I am still getting the pictures I want, but is it just time to give something else a go? Maybe. So I flexed the credit card and made a purchase. But before I reveal what camera I've bought, if you haven't already guessed, I actually bought two new cameras recently. So the first is the Ricoh GR3X, the new 40 mm version of their current GR3. So I did a video about the original GR3 explaining why I love this beautiful compact camera and all its benefits. Now, in that video, I mentioned the new X model, but said that the only way I would get this new camera would be to add it to the GR3 rather than replace it. So that's what I've done. This new 40 mm version now complements the 28 mm version that I have as a unique two camera lightweight setup. I take one body if I want absolute minimum gear, but as a combo, they really complement each other so well and form my new shooting style. Now, one of the main reasons to use in the Ricos is this. In reality, and I think many photographers I'm sure would admit to this too, is that 90% of the images that I take could, could be taken with my phone. Our phone cameras are so good these days that we can easily capture great shots when we don't have our digital SLRs or mirrorless cameras with us, and we'd be more than happy with the results. So the Ricos are about the same size as my iPhone, but of course a lot more flexible and offer a lot more control. But size-wise, they're ideal and will get the results. If I'm happy not to have the viewfinder, just like my phone of course, I can take full advantage of the form factor. That's something I want to explore a lot more now as these are little powerhouse cameras. So back to the main camera. I've now sold my two Pen Fs, traded in all my prime lenses and bought, well, this, the Fuji X-T5. Did you guess? Did you guess this was my new camera? Now this camera has divided a lot of current Fuji users, both with its styling and the change of sensor. But for me, it was all the right changes. The changes that I needed to convert me to the dark side and away from Olympus. So here are eight reasons why I made the switch and why this is my camera of choice for the next, well, the foreseeable future, shall we say. Number one, the LCD screen. Now this is one of the things that has divided Fuji users but I have longed for a flip-up style screen for so long now. I'm a still shooter with my main camera, 
I use a different camera for vlogging and filming these videos on, so I don't need a flippy out screen. So the fact that Fuji went back to given the fifth generation model the flip up screen again was, well, music to me. So much more practical for still shooting and the fact that I can also flip up in the vertical mode is genius. Why Olympus never adopted that, I'll never know. Number two, Ibis. Now this was a nervous part of the switch for me, as I know how good the Olympus in-body stabilisation is. So my criteria for this camera was that it needed to allow me to shoot at the magic 1 8 of a second for creative city shooting and get a sharp result with that. Well, with no other blur than the intentional stuff, if you see what I mean. And it does. So this is improved, but it's still not as good as Olympus. The Olympus IBIS, especially on the OMD cameras, can go a lot lower. And I don't think the X-T5 camera can guarantee to do this as well. You can tell this as in the official specs, Fuji claimed to have seven stops with a 50 millimeter lens, whereas Olympus based their statistics on an 80 millimeter lens. So it seems this is better than Fuji have done before, but a slight compromise there in the switch, if I'm honest. Number three, the 40 megapixel sensor. So this was one feature that I needed to embrace. Of course, being a previous Olympus shooter, I only had 20 megapixels to play with, and that was more than enough for me. So 40 megapixels was just going to be overkill, surely? Well, yes, but it's changed the way that I now shoot. I can now punch into that 40 megapixels to shoot with two different equivalent focal lengths, two fields of view without changing lenses. That's a game changer for me. I can simply use my favorite 35 millimeter focal length, which of course is a 23 millimeter lens on the Fuji, but punch into that sensor to also shoot at 50 millimeters. This is just field of view, of course, as I say, not depth of field or compression effect. Though of course I can change lenses if I require that too. But for everyday shooting, this is perfect and is how I use the Ricohs too. I punch into 35 millimeter with the 28 millimeter GR3 when needs be, and now 50 millimeter with the 40 millimeter X version. Less megapixels to play with there with these cameras, but still doable. Number four, four by three format. And along with the new sensor is a new aspect ratio in the menu, four by three the format of Micro Four Thirds. I'm switching to an APS-C camera and the 3x2 format, a format I've started to embrace again now with my renewed interest in 35mm film, and of course the Ricohs are APS-C 3x2 format too. But I think this is the first Fuji that has included 4x3 as an aspect ratio choice, alongside 1x1 square and 16x9, etc. This is basically an Olympus camera inside a Fuji one. Game changer there again for me. This is all good news. Number five, the EVF. So despite this camera not having as good an electronic viewfinder as the similar priced X-H2 from Fuji, it's better than my old Pen Fs. It could have been better of course, as even the new OM-1 from OMD Systems is up to about five megapixels now. So better than I'm used to, but it would have been nice to have a bit more higher res. Number six, size. So this camera is bigger than my Pen Fs, but slightly smaller than my EM1 Mark II. And of course, smaller than some of the other XT cameras. I guess pretty much ideal for me to use with the prime lenses then, as that's all I intend to use on this camera, prime lenses, just like my Pen Fs. So the size is, well, pretty much spot on too. Number seven, film camera-like controls. Now this is new for me, of course. The Olympus cameras were all mode-based setup. A few retro looking dials on a Pen F, but not like the Fujis. But I've started to use film cameras again and therefore quite enjoy that dial experience again after all these years. So maybe, 
time to try them on a digital camera too. Of course, there's front and back command dials too, if I want the other experience. So the best of both worlds really. But hey, I'm willing to give this new way a go too. And number eight, the lenses. So I did intend to just use all the smaller Fujicrons primes with this camera to keep everything small, as small and compact as possible. And I have bought the 16 mm the 23 mm the 35 mm and the 50 mm But I've also bought the new 23 mm f1.4. Now, I did intend to buy this lens too, to replace my favorite fast Olympus 17 mm f1.2 lens that I use for low light shooting. But this is now the default lens on my X-T5. It's fast, it's sharp, just like my old 17 mm but I can confidently crop into the sensor with this lens at all apertures. So I can shoot at 50 mm with this lens if I wish, and at a push, 70 mm too, without changing lenses. That's how I roll now. A prime lens camera that kind of acts like a zoom when needed. The extra size of the f1.4 lens is cancelled out by only having to carry this one lens. The camera has a built-in digital zoom to allow this, and that's great because I don't want to just crop in post. I want to compose and frame in camera too, but also has a sports finder mode that instead adds a white frame line in the viewfinder, just like Leica cameras do, to aid composition. But the lenses are also my eighth reason, simply because as unlike the Olympus Primes, Fuji are bringing out new lenses and upgrading older models all the time, unlike Olympus. The prime lenses I used on my Pen Fs were all 10 years old. The zooms have been getting updated more often, but not the primes. And those primes were never weather sealed either, unlike all the Fuji primes are. So to me, it's like Fuji are moving forward and I was missing out, whereas Olympus were well, just standing still, not knowing what their next move was. And, well, I just got a bit fed up with that. Hence the switch now. Now, I have kept my EM1 Mark II, plus a couple of zooms. And the reason for that is that all the equivalent Fuji zooms are bigger. And I don't want to go bigger. So for now, at least, I'm keeping my Olympus Zooms kit for those occasions when a zoom setup is more convenient. So I've had this camera since release day and I've been using it for the last couple of months and well, if you want to see some of the results, here they are. Now, it's not a perfect camera, but what camera is? Um, maybe I'll do another video about this, about the faults with the X-T5, in my view. That will be a good one for the old YouTube algorithm on this channel. But if you do want to know what those are, those faults, now, then I have done a podcast about this, and that is available to listen to as part of my E6 subscription. And with that, you may think my E6 subscription was again the sponsor of this video, but you'd be wrong. Instead, it's my online photography courses. So I've been running these online courses for around 15 years now, and they provide an ideal way to learn and improve your photography if you can't come on one of my photography workshops. I do city photo walks if you didn't know. So there are three online courses. A beginner's course, if you are new to photography and just trying to get to grips with your camera, an advanced course for those more advanced users looking to improve your photography, and thirdly, a creative masterclass for those looking to create images with a difference, to think outside the box and capture results, I guess, in a, a similar way that I do now. Images that are a bit different to your standard landscape and urban captures. These are year-long courses featuring full image critiques and advice from yours truly. And even if I do say so myself, are unique and you won't find any other course like this online. Or if you do, then, well, mine would definitely the original. You can find more details of how to enroll on my website or using this address. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in 2023.